Okay guys, so this is going to be the measurement and separation methods lab. Uh, in this lab, we're gonna learn different techniques such as gravimetric filtration, vacuum filtration, how to use a separatory funnel, and just general lab technique that we learned throughout the semester. Uh, the first uh, part of the lab that we're gonna look at is measuring uh, liquids in graduated cylinders, okay? So it's important that you read from the bottom of the meniscus. So the meniscus is the curved line um, that the liquid makes inside the graduated cylinder. Following this, you're gonna see some fast video of uh, the four graduated cylinders. We have one 1,000 milliliter uh, graduated cylinder, we have a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, we have a 25 milliliter graduated cylinder, and we have a 10 milliliter, milliliter graduated cylinder. Uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna read those measurements, and then we're gonna fill in the table at the back of the lab under section number one, reading liquid measurements, okay? And then we'll go over those liquid measurements right after uh, you're done viewing the video. Okay guys, so this is going to be uh, reading liquid measurements, okay? So we have four different size graduated cylinders. This one is a thousand milliliter uh, graduated cylinder. And as you can tell, the markings, uh, the big markings go every 100. The little markings are gonna go every 10. Okay, this is a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. The big, marking, the big markings are every 10, and each individual tick is going to be one milliliter, okay? And then we have a tw 25 milliliter graduated cylinder. It looks like it goes by fives, okay? And then we have a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder that uh, goes by ones, okay? So each tick is going to represent a 10th of a milliliter here. And each tick here is going to represent uh, a half of a milliliter, okay? So we get a nice up close visual what to do. Uh, make sure, remember, when we're reading liquid measurements, we read from the bottom of the meniscus. Okay, the curved line. Okay, so this is how we're gonna fill out the data table for the reading liquid measurements portion of the lab. Um, so we have our 1,000 milliliter cylinder, our 100 milliliter cylinder, our 25 milliliter cylinder, and our 10 milliliter cylinder, okay? So how many milliliter marking, uh, milliliters are between each marking and the 1,000? We said that in the video was, um, it goes by every 100, and then the little markings are going to be uh, by 10 milliliters. The 100 milliliter one, uh, we said that each tick was going to be one milliliter, 25 milliliters. How many milliliters are between each marking? That's gonna be a half. And then this goes by tenths of a milliliter. Uh, how many decimal places does the measurement need? Uh, these two are gonna be, uh, this one's gonna be zero because you can't, uh, you can't measure to the decimal place uh, with certainty on the, the big cylinder. Uh, on the 100 milliliter cylinder, uh, we can maybe measure one decimal place, if we can say like it's 0.5. Uh, same thing here, we can go, so each one's half a, half, a, uh, half a milliliter in between, so that's gonna be one decimal place, 
and this is going to be every tenth, so we can probably go two decimal places on this one. Uh, and the important part is how much water is in, in the cylinder. So this is what I'm looking for. Uh, this portion's confusing, and that's why I'm going over it. Um, so how much water is in the cylinder? Um, so we want to write those uh, to the nearest decimal place if, if we need decimal places, okay? So that's been the reading liquid measurements portion of this lab. On to correct pouring procedure. In this portion of the lab, you're going to learn the correct pouring procedure for a liquid. You're going to need an Erlenmeyer flask, a test tube, a stirring rod, and some tap water. Now, as you proceed through this portion of the lab, we want to answer some questions. Which method was easier? What advantages does the stirring rod method provide? And if you have been pouring concentrated acid instead of water, which method would be safer? So we'll answer these questions on your data table at the back of the lab once we're complete with this section. Thanks. Okay, so this is going to be a procedure for pouring a liquid. So it says that we um, need a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, which is right here. Uh, we need a test tube right here and uh, some tap water. So uh, usually when we're doing this, we have a stirring rod also. Um, just in case uh, the questions ask that. So uh, it says pour some tap water into the Erlenmeyer flask. So I'm gonna put some tap water, the Erlenmeyer flask. And it says pour the, the water from the flask into the test tube. So I'm gonna go test tube. Okay. Now, it says pour the water back into the flask. Okay, so we pour the water back into the flask. Now using a stirring rod, pour the water from the flask to the test tube. Okay, so our stirring rod's like that, and we're gonna pour using Erlenmeyer flask. Like that. So uh, it says answer the questions, the data sheet, and then clean the area and put away the equipment. So um, the reason why we use a stirring rod, we're pouring uh, from the Erlenmeyer flask to the test tube is, so it has more of an even flow and it has something to go against. Uh, usually when we're dealing with acids and uh, more harmful chemicals, uh, this is the procedure we use, okay? So it's, it should be easier to pour with the stirring rod in it, okay? Thanks. In this portion of the lab, you'll learn the procedure for weighing a liquid. You'll need a beaker, a graduated cylinder, and electronic balance, okay? So as you go through, we need to be able to answer the questions. What's the mass of the empty beaker? What's the mass of the beaker in the water? And what's the mass of the water? And you'll be able to see those calculations as we go through the lab. Okay, so this is going to be procedure for weighing a liquid. So it says that we need a beaker. I've got a beaker. Graduated cylinder. I've got a graduated cylinder. And um, so it says check to make sure our balance is zeroed. It's tarred. Okay. Place a clean, dry beaker on the balance. And we're going to weigh that as 110.76 grams. Okay, it says, so you need to record that. So it says that we are going to uh, measure out 95 milliliters of water. Okay, so let's measure So we're going to measure out 95 milliliters of water. Make sure that's pretty darn close. Okay, so it says that pour the water into the pre-weighed beaker. Okay. I'm going to pour it. Okay. And I'm going to record that new mass of 206.43. Uh, to calculate the mass of the liquid, we're going to subtract 
this mass minus the original mass of the beaker, okay? And we should get the weight of the, the liquid. In the next portion of the lab, we're gonna learn what gravimetric filtration is. You'll need a support stand, ring clamp, clay triangle, funnel, two beakers, and filter paper. You will be able to define what a residue is. You're going to describe the appearance of the residue, define a filtrate, and describe the appearance of a filtrate. Okay, this is going to be the uh, gravimetric filtration uh, portion of this lab. Okay, so it says you need a support stand with a ring clamp. Okay, so we've got that right here. Uh, we got a clay triangle. So clay triangle. We got a funnel. And then I have my two beakers uh, and filter paper. So the way we're gonna set this up is we put the clay triangle on the ring stand and we put the funnel like that. Okay, uh, so it talks about filter paper. So depending on the size of your funnel, so I got two different size filter papers. We got a rather big funnel, so I'm gonna use the big filter paper. Filter paper. Uh, so we're gonna fold it hot dog style first. And then we're gonna go hamburger style, like that. And so we make a nice cone. Now what we wanna do is put the filter paper inside like that. And we're gonna get our one of our beakers that's gonna sit down here. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit like that. And we wanna get some water to uh, wet the sides of the filter paper so it sticks to the side of the funnel like that okay and it should drain uh, by gravity sometimes it's a little slow so you got to be patient on this portion of the lab okay so um, what we're gonna do is it says we're going to wet the wet filter paper we did that uh, we're gonna weigh about two grams of sand okay so I have a weighing boat, okay? So I'm gonna put that on the scale and then I'm gonna tar it, okay? So zeroes it out and I'm gonna measure about two grams of sand. It really doesn't matter how much you use, but we're gonna try and get close, okay? So 2.21 grams of sand. Okay. Uh, so what we're gonna do is it's gonna we're gonna place the sand in about 50 milliliters of water in a beaker. Okay. So I'm gonna take my beaker. I'm gonna put my sand in it, and I'm gonna use um, a graduated cylinder, like we did earlier, and I'm gonna measure out 50 milliliters of water. And so I'm going to add it to the beaker, and so I get a mixture that looks like this. It looks like that, so some sandy water. Now what I'm going to tell you what's going to happen is a lot of the sand is going to stick inside the beaker, okay? So not all of it's going to filter. Um, so, and that's a good thing because the whole goal is for the filter paper to catch the sand, okay? So. I'm going to pour it through the filter paper. And so the whole job of the filter paper is to catch something called the residue. Okay, so what goes down in the bottom of the beaker is going to be the filtrate. And whatever stays in the filter paper is going to be called the uh, residue. Okay, so I'm going to move this over so y'all can see a little bit better. It's a slow process. I'll move my camera. So as you can see, you see some sand that's caught down there. 
and it's doing its job, the filter paper. Okay, so you want to make sure that there's no holes or gaps in there. Okay, so as this continues, it's going to take a while. So uh, that has been the gravimetric filtration procedure. Okay, going back to our gravimetric filtration, uh, it takes a little bit of time, but it says answer the question, what is the appearance of the filtrate? Looks pretty clear to me, and that's what it should be, okay? And this is going to be your residue in there. In the next portion of the lab, we're going to be dealing with vacuum filtration. You'll need a Buckner funnel, filter flask, tubing, aspirator, filter paper, and one beaker. In this portion of the lab, you'll be able to answer the following questions. Which was faster, gravimetric filtration or vacuum filtration? We're going to be able to describe the appearance of the residue. We'll be able to describe the appearance of the filtrate. And was this a chemical or physical change? Okay, guys, so this is going to be a vacuum filtration procedure. So what we're going to be using is a Buckner funnel, an aspirator, uh, and we have some tubing that's hooked up to our water faucet that creates a vacuum and suction, okay? So we're gonna take a piece of filter paper that's specifically for this vacuum filtration, and it says that we take uh, five grams of sand, so weighed up five grams of sand a little bit earlier, and about 45 milliliters of water, okay? And we're gonna put it in a beaker. So it says, place the sand in the beaker and then we're going to put the water in the beaker okay. so it says uh, turn on the water faucet the faucet will cause the pressure to drop okay so I'm going to take my camera off and hopefully not get too wobbly okay so there's my sand in my water and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour it inside the funnel. Okay, so what's causing, so there's a little bit of gravity and it's causing a vacuum. Okay, so it's sucking the, the water out and it's just going to leave the filtrate. Okay, or the residue. So this is going to be the residue down here, and this is going to be your filtrate down here. Okay. So as you can tell, it's pretty much all the water's gone, and you're just left with the sand on the filter paper. In the last portion of this lab, we'll be dealing with a separatory funnel. A separatory funnel is used to uh, separate liquids based upon their densities. Okay, you'll need a support stand, a ring clamp, a clay triangle, a separatory funnel, and two beakers. In this portion of the lab, you'll be able to determine which liquid is in the top layer, which liquid is in the bottom layer, which liquid is more dense, which liquid is less dense. You'll also be able to determine uh, which layer the food coloring is going to be able to dissolve in and what it means to be water soluble or oil soluble. Okay guys, so this is going to be uh, the procedure for using a separatory funnel. So this is going to be a separatory funnel right here. Okay, uh, you got your ring stand and your clay triangle. And we have a beaker down at the bottom to capture uh, whatever we're separating, the layers we're going to be separating. So what we're going to do is we got to make sure that our valve is closed and we're going to add some water into our separatory funnel. It really doesn't matter how much you add, but uh, I like to do about half and half, uh, half water, half baby oil. So we can see distinguishment between the layers. Okay, so there's our water. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some baby oil. Okay. Okay, so we add the baby oil. Now, separatory funnels use um, a difference in density to, uh, to separate the layers, okay? So the baby oil appears to be on top and 
the water appears to be on bottom. Now, we're gonna add a couple drops of food coloring in there, okay? And we are going to put our cap on, we'll put our little cap on, and we're gonna shake it up a little bit. Get all nice and mixed up. Sorry, I hit my hammer. Okay, and we're gonna put our ring stand back and we're gonna take the cap off and we're gonna let it settle for just a second. I'm gonna take my camera off the stand so we can get a little bit better view of what's going on. So, we can see that there's two distinct layers. Okay, the baby wheel is on top and the water is on bottom. You can see the uh, food coloring is migrating down to the bottom layer, okay? So, we're gonna use our knowledge of density to separate the two layers, okay? So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drain, and we're gonna stop whenever we get to this line that separates the two layers, okay? So what's in the beaker will be water, and what's left in the separatory funnel is going to be your baby oil. Okay, and we're gonna keep the baby wool for later. Okay, so I'm gonna start off slow. And I'm gonna let it drain. Sometimes these separatory funnels like to do their own thing. Okay, so it's getting closer and closer. So, I'm going to start slowing it down just a little bit. And I'm going to stop right there. Maybe just a little more is left. Okay. And so, as you can see, this is all water. And this is all baby oil left in here. And uh, so we're going to dispose of the water down the drain. And we're going to use the baby oil for later. Uh, one of your questions asks, what layer does the food coloring dissolve in? You should be able to answer that question now, okay? So this has been the separatory funnel portion of this lab. Thanks, and have a good day.